right, everybody, welcome back to another video. In this one, we have another amazing offshore spearfishing trip. It was a quick morning dive session, so we didn't really film and spearfish all day. And I'm not gonna lie, I have been holding on to this one for a while. I did film it a little, a little far back, but I held on to it because it gets pretty slow here in the fall and winter months as far as spearfishing goes in the Gulf of Mexico. And I wanted to bring a diving video for you guys at this time of the year. With that said, we went out with Mike the Mullet Man, a big, big YouTuber here in Texas, and Ben Sandall, he's a part of the Real Hunting crew. They have YouTube and uh, Instagrams. I'll leave them linked down in the description box below. The stars aligned, the conditions were great. It was nice and calm. We had crystal clear blue water. Visibility like I've never seen in the area we were at. You guys stay tuned. We're actually gonna get into some kingfish action this one. It's been kind of slow regarding kingfish this, this past summer and this year, spearfishing wise, but in this one, we changed that. So with that said, you guys stay tuned. I'm super excited to share this one with y'all. That's all the money. Kind of for it. Oh. Oh, they're, they're after it. There's a big one. Ooh, look at him. That might be a, I don't know. He's borderline. We'll see you in the water. Hey, get over here. So here is one of my early dives of the day and right off the bat I noticed the visibility was unreal. We could actually see the bottom, which if you've watched my previous spearfishing videos, you know is super rare for here in the Gulf of Mexico. Usually all you see is a dense cloud of murk, but today everything was settled. You can see, you can see fish on the bottom. It was great. I actually spotted this school of perfect size black drum, and you know what I did. Popped a good one, and just take a note of how much the bottom murks up there for the shot and commotion of that fish. Like I said, it is very unusual to have the bottom settled enough to where you can actually see it and not just see a cloud of that murk. I shot a black drop. I've never seen it this clear here. Yeah. This rig is so much clearer than the other one. Really? Yeah. Like hey. right on the bottom, it just clears up. This is a detail right here, baby. So here we are at the next spot and it actually got clear, which was unreal. I have never seen this spot this clear. So I spot this really nice red snapper, but if you look closely, right behind it is a massive southern stingray. I definitely did not want to hit that. Luckily I didn't shoot because that would have been a huge headache. But this thing freaking maneuvered his way around the structure and completely disappeared into the murk and I could not find it. You can see that cloud on the horizon in there and yeah the bottom just got murked up and maybe that current was picking up but yeah still a cool dive really clear there's a small ling there hanging out and I even went down again to look for that snapper but he knew what was coming. Something to point out here as well if you notice oftentimes I don't dive to the bottom in the Gulf of Mexico number one being because it clouds up the bottom eliminating visibility but number two because of those stingrays if I land on one of those things it is game over I will occasionally lie on the bottom when I'm inside the rig or really close to being inside the rig where there's a hard substrate kind of on top of that muck so it won't murk up and where I can actually see that there won't be a stingray. Here's an example of cobia laying on the bottom. I actually speared one this summer with a stingray barb lodged into its side going into the stomach. So this will give you a good idea of how exactly that happens where you can see those cobia laying on the bottom as well as those stingrays, which is why you gotta be very careful if you are gonna get close to the bottom. Here's a shot on a Spanish mackerel. We pushed out a little bit farther into some bluer water and this thing was pretty good size for Spanish mackerel. Good eating fish, nevertheless. Here's Mike swimming around chasing fish. 
and he actually gets his very first ever mangrove snapper. Really good fish, really great eating fish. So I'd been diving for two or three days in a row prior to this trip and I'd already gotten plenty of fish for myself, but these guys don't really get to go a whole lot and I wanted to get them some fish. So I decided to shoot a mangrove snapper and here in a minute you'll see what else. But just check out this clarity. If you are familiar with diving in the Gulf of Mexico, you will truly appreciate clear blue water with minimal current and calm seas. The clear water actually made it possible to see the kingfish hanging way out from the rig. And if you can see that, there are tons. I stick a shot in this one, it was far away, but I was aiming in between that second dorsal and that anal fin. So a lot of you guys might be wondering, why the heck did you shoot this thing in the tail? Well, the reason is shots tend to hold a lot more often when you shoot them in this area because there's a lot more tendons making it less likely to tear out. If you hit it mid-body, in the stomach, or sometimes even up in the gill area, it can tear out. But that shot, you can see is real high, but it's in between those two fins, so it held. It didn't tear out. This was actually the only kingfish I speared this summer, if I recall correctly. So I was super pumped to see them, number one, but also to shoot one. So this right here was even cooler. Like I said, this was Mike's first time ever out spear fishing. And what does he do? He stones a kingfish. Not only was this his first kingfish on the spear gun, but he stoned it. Unreal. We also had this little shark coming up and nosing around trying to get at this kingfish. But yeah, I don't have a whole lot of dive buddies that even speared kingfish. So to get one on the first time, first try ever, is pretty cool. I will say though, the conditions were perfect and I'd probably seen more kingfish this day than any day I've ever been out diving. If not the most, then it was definitely the top three days that I've seen for quantities of kingfish. They were just everywhere. So there we go. This was the bounty of the day. Everyone speared fish. We got spade fish, mangrove snapper, Spanish mackerel, kingfish. They caught a cobia. Good day. <laughs>